In this video we examine the process of creating a map within QGIS. If you are coming from ArcGIS or another mapping program, the approach within QGIS may initially seem confusing, but give it a chance. Once you become familiar with this approach, creating maps with QGIS is quick and easy. I'll begin the lesson by quickly reviewing the five key elements of a map. Then, we'll go through the steps of creating a new print layout in QGIS, followed by adding and editing various map elements. We'll finish by exporting the map in a variety of formats so you can print them, include them in reports, and so forth. As always, timestamps are available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's get started. Before we jump into creating and exporting maps in QGIS, I want to take a moment and talk about the five elements of a map. Now these are of course in addition to the map itself, and they begin with a title. Also we have scale bars, in this case we've got two different scale bars in different measurements. We also have our scale in a ratio format, so 1 to 300,000. We also have our north arrow or compass showing us what direction this map is oriented. Our legend helping explain different elements of this map. And then finally the larger spatial context which shows us basically where this first map is located in relation to other places on the Earth's surface. So as you work through this lesson, do take note that in the data download you have two QGIS documents. One is a begin file, which is the file you'll want to use when you start working with this lesson. The complete version, basically the finished version of the map at the end of this lesson. To create a map in QGIS, we start by clicking on the project dropdown and selecting new print layout. Let's go ahead and name this map one. Click OK. This will open up our new map layout window. And we'll want to go ahead and change those page properties. So right click and choose page properties. Select a size that you want to use. Uh, in my case, this will be a letter. I'm going to go portrait. What I also like to do after I select this is actually click on custom and that allows me to change the units to something I'm more familiar with. Now that we have the page set up here, the last thing we'll want to do in creating this new print layout is set up some grid lines. And so these grid lines or guides will basically be snapping locations that will allow us to add elements to the map and keep them lined up and looking professional. So we're going to add three horizontal guides and two vertical guides. And I like to work in quarter inches. And you'll notice here when you're entering numbers that sometimes QGIS acts a little wonky, but fiddling with this quickly uh, makes it easy to understand. So we're going to go ahead and add a quarter inch at the top, and then also at the bottom we're going to put one at 10 inches, and then another one at 10.75 inches. And so what this will give us is a quarter inch margin on the top and bottom, and and three quarters inches here for our map elements, things like scale bars, title, and other text. We'll go ahead and finish this up by adding our two vertical guides. So the first one is in inches, 0.25, and then of course on the other side this will be 8.25 inches. And so here we have our new map layout and our guidelines. Okay, now that we have our map set up, the first thing we're going to do is add our map. So we can do this in a couple ways. We can use the Add Item drop-down and select Add Map, or we can use these buttons down along the left side and click the Add Map button. Because we have guides, we can snap to this and drag out our map, and then when we release this, we have our map added. As you can see, I didn't quite make it to those guidelines, so I can reposition these and let them snap again. Now we want to go ahead and adjust the item properties for this map. I'd like the scale to be something a little bit more even. In this case, 300,000 works out pretty well. Go ahead and reposition this map by selecting the Move Item Context. Also go ahead and turn on a frame so that this map has a frame. We want to add some shapes at the bottom here for our other elements. So we go to Add Item, Add Shape, and choose Add Rectangle. And I'm going to actually drag out two of these and let it auto lock in the center. Again, it didn't quite make it to the bottom there. Add Item, Add Shape, Add Rectangle. Do the same thing again. And this basically will give me two areas to add scale bars and other elements. So let's go ahead and add those scale bars. I'll just scroll in here real quick to go ahead and zoom in. Add item, add scale bar. And so then I'll just click and drag out a scale bar. Now of course I'd like it to fit in the top half, 
but that's okay. We're going to change a bunch of the item settings for the scale bar, and we're going to go ahead and get this positioned correctly. So the first thing we want to change here is the style, and we want to choose, in this case, line ticks up. And you can see this changes the style of the scale bar. We'll go ahead and leave scale bar units at kilometers. We'll leave one unit. Everything here in the units is good. So let's go down to segments. Let's go ahead and keep it at fixed width. That means between each tick is five of our units. In this case, that's kilometers. But we can click this up. In this case, to five of those, this will fit in this area. The next thing we want to do is change the label margin and we want to drop that down to something like one millimeter so that those ticks move right up against the numbers denoting distances. We'll leave the other settings here and move down to fonts. And of course you can change a lot of these. I'm just going to change the font real quick. You can change the size of it, all of these sorts of things. We don't really need to do that right now. We don't need to change frame or background or any of these things. So let's go ahead and add another scale bar. And this time we're going to use different measurements. We're going to use miles. So we'll see it doesn't fit here, but again, we're going to go select this scale bar. We're going to change those item properties. So instead of single box style, we want line ticks down. Now, of course, we want these numbers to be below this. What we're going to do is come down to the display option vertical label placement and we're going to select below segments and so what this is going to allow us to do eventually is shift these around and line them up so that we have one scale bar that's actually showing us measurements in both kilometers and miles next thing with this to do is choose the units and we'll keep this at miles or change this to miles we'll leave everything else here segments let's do a fixed width of four and let's do four so we can actually fit 16 miles to the 25 kilometers here we'll go ahead and change the label margin down to one like we did with the last one and then also change the font and so now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and we're going to position these a little bit so that they line up that little bit better so that looks pretty good these fonts don't quite look right to me, so I'm going to check these real quick. They are not the same. So here we go. We'll just correct those quickly. That'll shift our labels around a bit, which means our scale bars will look a little wonky. I want to make sure and just sort of look at both ends here and line these up. And this is a little bit of back and forth, but then use the shift key and click and then we have both of these selected and we can shift them around inside here until they look good next thing we want to do is add our text boxes so click the add item drop down add label drag this out so we have a box that we can use text in see this here and i'm just going to call this palatial county cemeteries and I'm going to go ahead and center this. And of course, we can change the font, we can change the size, all of these sorts of things. Go ahead and repeat that process to add another text box or label. And this is where we can enter all of that other sort of information. So a title here. Our scale text, which we have noted is one to 300,000 give a couple spaces and tell people what our base map is in this case it's the national elevation data set and then also our map projection which we can check by going back to the main QGIS document and clicking down here in the lower right hand corner and we can see it's an NAD 83 UTM 17 North so we'll just go ahead and enter that here I'll go ahead and center these and now well, we've added those elements as well next we want to go ahead and add our legend so add item add legend we'll go ahead and just drag out a box for this 
Make sure we've selected the legend and come into the item properties and we can enter a title, we'll just call it legend. And then unclick the auto update here and remove some of these additional map items that you don't want showing up here. Also we have here, we can see our Alachua counties has an underscore still. So how do we, how do we change that? Well, we go back to the QGIS main document, right click on that layer, choose to rename it. And we can just delete and add a space there so that when we come back here, we can see that this will change here. Sometimes it won't change in the actual legend box itself, which can be a little annoying. But what we can do is just update all. We will have to re-delete some of these. But if you've forgotten to rename something correctly, this is a quick way to do that. Next, we're going to add our north arrow. And in QGIS, this can be a little tricky. So you click the add item, you choose add picture, drag out a shape and then click the drop down for search directories. This may take a moment to load, but this is a bunch of different image files that you can choose, including a whole variety of north arrows or compasses. So click on one and you can resize this as you want. And there's your north arrow or compass added. Finally, the last part to add is the inset map to denote a larger spatial context. So what we're going to do before we get to that point is we're going to lock the layers on the first map. That means if we change or add a base map for this inset map that we're about to add, it won't affect the appearance of this first map. So go ahead and add a map. Click and drag that out. You see it looks like the first map, but we're going to update that. So the first thing you want to do here is click frame. Go back to the main QGIS document turn off all of these layers and let's go ahead and add a base map. I'm just going to throw on a Google roads layer map here and use that as my base map. So if we go back to the layout manager, we can see this has automatically been added to this. Now we can do some other interesting things with this map. If we select it, we can come to the item properties here. We're not too worried about the scale, but I'm going to go out to something like 4 million. There we go. But of course, you can't really see necessarily where this is at. So the way we're going to do that, we'll click lock our layer so nothing gets changed. Come down here to overview and we'll add an overview. The map frame should be map one. And we can see, uh, in this case, a pink rectangle representing this map. Now we can, of course, change this like we would any symbol in QGIS. And so I want this to be a solid black. I'll have it at 0.5 and I want the stroke style to be a solid line. And now we can see the main map, its extent is being referenced in map two. Go ahead and click save and you've now finished adding all of the five map elements to your map. Of course, the final thing to do with your map is to export it. So we'll go to layout, export as image. And you can name it anything you want. I'll go with map one here. You can choose a whole variety of formats. I usually stick with PNG, but you can use JPEG or TIFF or what have you. Click save. Do you want to replace it? Yes. And I'll stick with the 300 DPI for now. Click save, it'll work for a moment. And then you'll get a message up here telling you it has successfully exported. So if we pull up that map, we're going to see uh, maybe something strange with that little inset map and sure enough here we have what looks like a really weird overly detailed google map and so sometimes if you use a google map as your base map in the inset map what it does is depending on the dpi it may zoom in um, in the the exported version the way to change this is to go ahead and lower the dpi and so sure enough, when we look at this, we do have a lower DPI on the map overall, but we have correct spacing up here. So this is not perfect. You could, of course, use both maps and cut out the Google inset and add it to the other one in an image editing software. That's not ideal, but you could also use all sorts of other maps for base maps and those inset maps as well. We've gone ahead and created our map and now we've exported it as well. So as always, links to location of data are in the description. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.